Star Trek Online and Terra launch their latest console expansions, Shroud of the Avatar decides to follow through with going free-to-play, Combat Arms Reloaded made its way over to Steam, and say hello to the spiritual successor to Grand Chase. What's up guys, James Blonde here with a weekly recap for gaming news and announcements for the week of November 2nd, 2018. And starting out the news this week, InMass Entertainment announced the second Wild Hunter, Soma, has arrived in Closers. She wields a Tonfa and harbors a deep hatred of dimensional monsters. She delivers powerful combos and specializes in silencing enemies. The release is accompanied by a new Gleam campaign for the game, running from the 30th of October, which is already passed, to the 13th of November at midnight Pacific Daylight Time. The grand prize winner of the giveaway will receive a Razer Blade 15-inch gaming laptop, and second prize winner will receive 15,000 EMP, which is worth around 150 bucks. And 25 runners-up will win a special game pack. This might be something worth entering. I mean, I know I could use another 15-inch gaming laptop. Also in InMass news, the Action MMO Terra launched a new update on PS4 and Xbox One this week. Mentioned in past recaps, the free Deathrack update introduces new dungeons, the rare and collectible Misery and Deathrack gear sets, and Guild vs. Guild battles where guilds engage in heated 24-hour battles against up to three guilds at once. That's a long time. Warriors received upgraded and rebalanced skills as well in this update, and skill chains are now customizable, so players can choose the next skill that pops up in their chain, as well as create altogether new skill chains. Players waiting to customize groups can now post details in the new LFG tool as well. Seems like a hefty update, geared in the exact right way. Next up, Soul Worker received a new update this week, focused around Lily Bloomer Chin. Lily witnessed her brother's death from the jaws of a horrific monster from the Great Void, and she was never the same. Her powerful mist sights rends her foes asunder, but she's perhaps missing a few screws, if you know what I mean. In this update, she received a class advancement, which adds six new skills to her repertoire, as well as a new outfit. And as part of the game's ongoing release schedule, the latest Soul Worker update provides players with new opportunities to further develop their characters with class advancements. In future updates, each of the remaining four of six total classes will receive a class advancement, allowing players to continue the main quest and face powerful foes that await their arrival. On a fairly similar note, KOG Games announced recently that the closed beta registration has begun for the newest title, Kurtz Pell, Bringer of Chaos. Kurtz Pell is a third-person action RPG with heavy anime influences. The game is considered to be the spiritual successor to Grand Chase. Now, that's a bold statement, but hey, if someone is going to make it, I guess it's KOG Games. You'll be able to have two separate jobs slash trades in the form of weapon paths that can be hot-swapped during battle. Players can enjoy a suite of comprehensive 2v2 PvP modes joined together by an intelligent matchmaking system. There will also be large raid-style battles for players who care a little bit more about PvE to participate in. The closed beta itself begins on November 15th, which isn't too far from now. The game should get a lot of attention by anime MMO fans. Star Trek Online fans on console don't have long to wait for the Age of Discovery content, as it was announced this past week that the update will see a launch on November 13th for both PS4 and Xbox One. This update allows players to create a Federation captain from the popular CBS All Access series Star Trek Discovery and set out on their first mission with Cadet Sylvia Tilly, voiced by Mary Wiseman from the show. A new tutorial is also featured in the Discovery universe, along with two episodes of content, a streamlined mission journal, added reputation tiers, a new task force operation, and plenty more. Age of Discovery also unlocks the level requirement for all the missions and helps players to more easily navigate the wealth of content in Star Trek Online. Seems like a much needed update for those just getting into it, and I'm pretty sure that you'll see a lot of fresh content come from the MMO Huts crew covering the expansion. Look forward to that. Also last week, the record-setting, crowd-funded game from Richard Garriott, Shroud of the Avatar announced that it's moving to a free-to-play model. Now keep in mind guys, this happens less and less often, so it's kind of a big deal. The new user experience has been overhauled, and the features available to free players have been expanded and outlined. Players can also choose their story path independently of their starter decks. 
And once you've completed the tutorials, you'll journey through the Lunar Rift and head to one of the three starting areas, which abandon further tutorials in favor of focusing exclusively on story. This update also added a huge amount of quality of life updates and major features to the game, including player-made heraldry, expansions to the fishing system, player-made dungeons, global banks and chats, and the elimination of experience point decay on death, among others. For a full breakdown of the update's changes, check out the link in the description below. Going just a little bit old school with this next one here, EverQuest Next Expansion, not EverQuest Next, EverQuest the original one, EverQuest Next, you know, never happened. The Burning Lands will arrive on December 11th, with beta access available right now. Those who have pre-ordered the expansion can jump into the beta today and experience the new content centered around the war between the Plane of Air and Plane of Fire across six new zones. The expansion also brings with it a new luck stat that influences the amount of critical damage you do, the amount of gold in your splits, and the chance you have to succeed at trade skill combines. This is only a small portion of the new expansion, so keep a lookout for plenty more details as they come available at MMOs.com. On a completely different note, Combat Arms Reloaded, the first-person shooter from Valify Global, officially launched on Steam this past week. This free-to-play shooter lets players customize their soldier, acquire new gear and perks with ranking up, and a suite of achievements for players to hunt. Dozens of game modes, plenty of maps, and frequent updates make for plenty of ways to enjoy the game alone or with friends. Items in the game can be acquired with gear points, which is the in-game currency, or with G-coins, the paid currency. The most recent update to the game also added in new features including chat lobbies, inventory expansions, a display for EXP needed to reach the next rank, whispering milestone events, and 30 new international flags. Also launching on Steam this past week is Dreadnought, the badass colossal ship commanding game from Greybox. The game, which includes the new launch update command, the Colossal, is billed as a tactical shooter featuring massive capital ships. It pits players against one another in 8v8 matches across exotic locations around our solar system, and players can acquire and command over 70 different customizable vessels from 5 specialized classes, and with each victory they'll unlock more advanced ships, modules, and more. The current version of the game includes the Deathmatch, Onslaught, a PvPvE mode in which players battle both the enemy team's ships and neutral AI vessels, and conquest game modes, and a post-release update will add the Havoc game type as well as the ability for players to create custom matches to play with their friends. The launch on Steam isn't just that, the recent patch added in plenty of new content, a revamped hangar, redesigned interface, new music, and more. Next up, World of Tanks is offering up some special Twitch Prime content as of this past week that we figured we might mention to you guys. The package works both on PC and console versions of the game and includes an elite female commander, the Valentine Mark II tank, an emblem, medal, and more. And all you need to do in order to grab this is have a Twitch Prime membership, which I'm pretty sure is included with anyone who has an Amazon Prime membership, I may be wrong on that one, and a World of Tanks account. Each content bundle must be claimed separately, PC and console both. This offer will be available from now until 30th of November, so yeah, we've got all month to grab it. Might as well do so. The Legends of Aria team revealed the details of their Karma system this past week, and the ultimate goal here is to make sure that Legends of Aria isn't another, quote, FFA PvP gank box, unquote but a living, breathing world where people can do as they please as long as they're willing to accept the consequences of their actions. Players who gank others and commit crimes will receive a permanent alignment shift, which can only be undone by gaining positive karma. Players of the innocent alignment will receive full protections in protected area. Chaotic players can engage in PvP conflict anywhere outside of the town, and outcasts choose to surrender most of their freedoms and become walking targets almost everywhere. That's kind of a fun aspect of the game. I think that PvP players are really going to enjoy this. Anyway guys, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. Like always, thank you so much for your support. For more information on the news topics, check the links in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news or more news in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.